Here's the real me. Hello everyone, welcome back to Osmo Tips. I've been really busy off late. I've been doing gymnastics, dancing, school trips, and I missed all of you, and especially you. Today's video is gonna be all about the chest strap mount. The chest strap mount allows you to mount the Osmo to your chest so you can shoot hands-free. <coughs> At least that's what the brochure says. But here's a question. Is this a must-have or a nice-to-have accessory? Well, let's find out. So first, we're going to do a real quick unboxing. Then we'll go through all the different mounting options that are available. Next, we'll take the chest strap mount through several different tests. Then we'll wrap it all up with our no holds barred conclusion, put some scores on the board, and then give you our Osmo Tips verdict. So when you open the box, you're greeted with the usual slick DJI presentation, the packaging, the information pamphlets, everything just looks spot on. The chest strap mount itself comes with all the straps neatly tucked away and a thin plastic wrap protects the plastic shield from any scratches during transportation. The chest strap mount itself consists of two parts. First is the quick release mount, which as the name implies, is a quick way to detach it and reattach it to the chest mount. So to release the quick release mount, you simply push the lock button in, which in turn releases the lock and catch mechanism, allowing you to slide out the quick release mount. Then the only other parts are the actual strap mount itself. So to mount the Osmo, you first mount the quick release plate to the Osmo's rosette mount. Tighten and fasten it to the Osmo. So really simple. Next, you simply slide the quick release plate into the chest mount housing by simply sliding it in so it locks in place. So very easy. The quick release blade has latches on each of the four sides, making it possible to slide it into the housing in any orientation. So that makes it quite versatile and almost foolproof. Once the blade is locked into place, then firmly lock its position by tightening the knob on the side. And that's it. You can also mount the quick release blade to the gimbal remote extension for a much lighter setup if you just want to mount the camera part of the Osmo. Again, you simply screw on the quick release blade to the camera end of the gimbal remote extension and then mount it to the chest strap in the same way. This allows the gimbal to operate in an orientation similar to the flashlight mode for a much lower profile setup. Next, you simply switch the Osmo on and it works just as normal. The rest of the chest strap is really just the actual straps themselves. There is obviously the shoulder strap as well as a chest strap. These are made from really high quality materials which all make for a very comfortable wear. All you do to strap it on is you simply hook this on like that. Okay, get this into position and then this strap comes around like that and then hooks into there. Make sure to tighten is required because you really need a tight fit so I'm gonna when you're fully strapped in you'd look something like this so I've already mounted this quick release plate and then all I do is I lock that in place and then I use this screw to tighten and that should be ready so I'm gonna unlock the gimbal Switch that on and then move the joystick so that the camera is facing forward. So at this stage, I'm ready to shoot. Now I want to mount it to the camera, which has been attached to the gimbal extension cable. Obviously, I want to remove the adapter from here and then I simply screw it on here. So this can already go in place just like that then you unlock the gimbal tighten this all I have to do with this part is mount it onto the handle 
lock that and now I can switch it on. So now I've got the camera facing forward and again you've got the handle in your hand. So this is what it looks like from a side view. You can tilt down, tilt up, but in this orientation you cannot pan left or right. So that's a little bit of a disadvantage right there. So with that out the way, let's get straight into the tests. Okay, so this is test number one. Test number one is the Osmo in its most natural state, in its most used state. So I've simply mounted a phone holder and a microphone receiver, and that's it. This can serve as the control for this trial. So I'm going to walk between point A and point B, and then when I get to point B, I'm going to run back just to have a look at what that footage looks like. All right, ready? Let's go. So nothing fancy, just the most natural walk imaginable. You might remember this test strip when in the summer when we're testing the Z-axis. It's right here, this is our testing strip. All right, so I'm now at point B and then all I'm gonna do now is simply run back. Okay, that's it. Okay, now this is test number two. Test number two, as you can see, I've got the Zim axis mounted on the Osmo, exactly the same setup, and I'm gonna do exactly the same test. So first of all, I'm just gonna walk as normally as one would when you're holding the Z axis. So this is kind of like my technique, if you like, where I've got it slightly pointing downwards, but I've realized this gives me the most stable footage when I look back but you be the judge okay so I've got to point B and then all I do is I turn around and run and that's it that's a z-axis test okay so this is now test number three Test number three, I've simply got the Osmo mounted to the chest strap mount. And then I'm just looking at the phone here. Okay, so here we go, test number three. So I'm simply gonna walk again in as normal orientation as possible. The cable that you see dangling down there is basically the mic receiver, just so we can get some clean audio. But otherwise, this is how you would mount it. And like I said, I'm just walking normally. Then when I get to this stage, I turn back and then I run for it. It's a bit difficult to run. And that's it. So in test number four, I've simply got the Osmo mounted directly to the chest mount. And then using the gimbal remote extension, I've hooked that up to the Osmo handle. And so this is test number four. Let's do this. So I'm just trying to walk as normally as possible. I don't know why I'm always saying that, but I'm trying. Okay, turn around point, and then I dash. And that's it.
So this next test is basically to see what sort of driver point of view shots we can get, you know. I'm obviously making use of the gimbal extension cable. So everything else is, you know, hooked on here. That's just the mic receiver and the handle. I'm going to put this to one side. As you can see, we're already recording. So I'm not going to have to touch this. Similarly, I've already framed my shot. Okay, so I'm not going to need this either. So I'm going to put that away. Safety is of paramount importance. So we're going to start right now and then we're simply going to drive and see what we get. It feels fine, feels good. You know, you just concentrate on what you need to do. As I said, you know, I have no idea how this is going to turn out. I just want to see what kind of shot we get. So let's, let's do this. Let's carry on. So whether it can act as your dash cam, I'm not 100% sure. But you know, if you've got a shot that you want to show the driver point of view, as I'm saying, without having to worry about stabilization and mounting it in the car somewhere, you know, this could be a, a setup that works. So this is the last test that I want to do, and I'm calling this the conspicuous and stealth shooting test. Conspicuous because I want to see how many people are going to be observant and I'm going to be staring at me, making me feel uncomfortable as I just walk through this busy mall, Christmas shopping. right there um, I don't really think anybody was noticing that I do have this contraption right here and this makes it quite a a good setup if you like you know previously like I said in this mall I've walked up and down and I've been stopped and I've been told to stop shooting as soon as I started taking the camera out so with this you never know it looks kind of hidden you know all the cables are nicely stacked away so yeah not bad at all So that's it. So now that the testing is done, it's time to summarize all our findings of all the tests that we've done and give you our full summary, recommendations and the all important Osmo Tips verdict. So first let's start with the positives, the good stuff we like. First you got to say the build quality. again. DJI has not disappointed. I mean, the quality of the materials in this strap are really, really top-notch and outstanding. The way the quick-release mechanism works, it's just a joy to operate. So, you know, when you look at the straps, this thing is really built to last and I'm sure will withstand a lot of abuse for many, many years. Number two is the design of this quick release mechanism we've covered it in the test that we were doing when we're strapping it on really found it really really easy and actually a joy to use i've used a lot of quick release blades quick release mechanisms in, in different cameras this i've got to say is one of the best that i've used number three and pretty obvious one is you do have your hands free whenever you mounted this chest mount so you can then hold your mobile phone or any other accessories without having to worry about holding the camera so that's a good positive right there I mean, the first negative is pretty obvious. When you look back at the footage, we saw that there's a lot of this bobbing movement, this up and down movement that you normally get when you're just walking without any stabilization in the Z axis. And that really looks quite bad in some of the footage that we shot. And as such makes most of this footage quite unusable because of the exaggerated up and down bobbing movement that you get. Number two is what I'm calling the swivel action. So when you've got this mounted 
like there and then you just turn slightly you know as you walk, which is quite natural as you're walking you do tend to get that swivel action being picked up in some of the shots there was almost always a slight swivel to the side as i was walking and not sure that i could actually use this footage that much number three is um not that bad actually but it is a bit of a negative i found when you have the the osmo mounted right here like that you know the proximity of your ears to the gimbal motors is is quite close so you do tend to have that noise of the gimbal in your ear for quite a quite some time but you know obviously as you start recording that minimizes to some extent up until the camera gets a little bit hot and the fans kick in in which case the fan noise starts getting quite loud in your ears but you know it's not really a big one but it is it is a bit of a negative the other negative is when you mount this you can only mount it obviously on the left side just like this um so that means you're free to use your right hand you know to hold the handle or any other accessory microphone whatever because if you hold it with the left hand chances are it will be in in line of view of the camera so what if you're left-handed and your left hand is your stronger hand then i haven't seen that there is a left-handed chest strap for those people who might want to use their left hand as a stronger of the two hands another negative i found and this is really one of the reasons why i bought this chest strap mount is to try and see if i could use it in the vehicle i really want wanted to see if i could use this driver point of view shots to me it was a bit of a disappointment seeing this is one of the main reasons why i wanted to to use this strap to see if i could use it for the for that kind of shot okay so that's it on the negatives now time to put some definite scores on the board so let's start off with ease of setup i mean it's not really complicated to set this up and the quick release plate really makes setup quick and easy so we give this a five out of five next let's look at the ease of use i mean this camera does have quite a bit of weight on it so it does take a bit of getting used to walking around with this on you and you're never really walking naturally when you've got this strap on that's what i found maybe with time that might improve but for that reason we're giving ease of use a three out of five now the next one quality of output and this as you recall is where most of our weighting for our scoring system goes to so this we score out of 10 and quality of output basically means does this strap do a good job when you look back at the footage that you've shot is it delivering the quality that you expect sadly the quality of the output is not great mainly because of that bobbing movement that up and down movement it's really quite bad so for that reason we're scoring it a 4 out of 10. lastly the cost factor i mean this unit is well built as i mentioned you know everything works well in terms of its actual design so it costs 59 pounds which is quite a lot of money for this and then when you look at the quality that you get at the end of the day we really think you know there's a mismatch between the costs and the quality of output that we get so for that reason we're scoring it at three out of five so that gives us a total score of 15 out of 25 for the chest strap mount so finally the osmo tips verdict would we recommend the chest strap mount and the answer is no not really we really think this is an accessory which is a nice to have but probably not a must have accessory because of its inability to really help improve the quality of the footage which at the end of the day most of us are using these things to try and get the best footage that we can out of these cameras so there we have it that is the full lowdown of our experience of using this chest strap mount and if you found this video useful and you enjoy watching this sort of videos here's something you can do for us you know we go out and we purchase these things because nobody sponsors our channel everything we do on this channel is really genuine to help you guys out with information you know reviews tips tricks you know anything that would just make your life using the osmo that much better but we do end up incurring costs obviously and all we're asking you is to help us get more of this stuff so we can do more reviews and what you can do is you can help the cause by making a small donation to the osmo tips fund if you like and we use this fund to then purchase any accessory that we find useful so that we can review it we can use it 
and to donate is really very simple. All you do is you simply go to paypal.me forward slash Osmotips or you can use the link in the description of this video down below So no donation is too small and everything adds up all we want to do is to continue doing this work It has got to a point where we now can do with any kind of help so that we can get more and more of these accessories I mean, they're not cheap But they are essential for us to be able to review in detail and give you an honest truth of how we feel when we are using these accessories So till next time my friends take great care and we'll see you in the next video